but simply from the angle of space. Space. Where are we going to put all these people? If we have a city the size of Birmingham coming into Britain, was it every once every six years? Where are we going to put them? What are we going to do with what they produce? How are we going to feed them? How are we going to water them? How are we going to house them? How are we going to ensure that they have a high standard of living and a high quality of life and without damaging our own standard of living and uh, quality of life? Where are the jobs going to come from or the wages? Uh, where are the recreational facilities? Where is the food going to come from yeah. for, for this mass movement of people to our shores? The last members of the wartime generation of 1418 have died the other week. Men who are 109, 110, 112, 113, some of them fought in three or four different major engagements within those wars. What did they fight for? Did they fight for South London the way it is now? Did they fight for Greenwich the way it is now and will become in the future? Did they fight for Inner Manchester now? Or did they fight for a different type of England, a different type of Britain, one that resonated with its own national traditions, one which was prouder than it is today, less forlorn and less broken than it is today, less cowardly to be what it is than, it is to be, than, than they fought for at that time? When they went over the top, they didn't fight for tolerance, progress and multiculturalism. They were fighting for an identity that was ethnic, that was racial, that was culturalised. They knew who they were, even if they hadn't got the wit to express it, they knew what they were. And they had people who interpreted it for them. But in 62 years, this country, and in particular many parts of it, including parts of Manchester, have been changed beyond all recognition. In 1947, when I was born, it was said there were 9,000, not 90,000 or 900,000, but 9,000 members of ethnic minorities in this country, plus a few refugees who come over at the end of the war. 9,000, no problem at all. The British nation was relatively homogenous, relatively the same. It was said that the British people in 1947, on average, were 30th cousins, which is probably true of all the people here. If you were to trace your ancestry back far enough, you'd probably find this gentleman here was the 30th cousin, or less, of this gentleman here, who in turn would be a 30th cousin of that gentleman over there. The nearer people are geographically and the nearer their family are, uh, that's more so. In other words, the British nation was not just a nation of people who happened to live in the same area, it was actually a family of families, or rather a family of interrelated families. And then within this short time, this 62 years, things have changed quite clearly, quite massively. How have they taken place? Well, first of all, of course, we got the Commonwealth immigration. You've heard of 1948, the Windrush over from the West Indies. And they continued throughout the 1950s. Why? Because we had an obligation to bring them in. What was that obligation? Well, actually, it was a legal obligation. Where did it come from? Well, the government passed it. They passed an act, the British Nationality Act, that said we had an obligation. One, to allow them in, and two, to give them citizenship when they came in. Many years went by, and we had the European Union, and we had another obligation to accept people. Where did this obligation come from? Well, this was again invented by the European Communities Act of 1972. Again, coming up to more recent times, the words asylum seeker hit the headlines. Where did this obligation to accept asylum seekers come from? Guess it came from <laughs> more legislation legislation that the government passed. Now, we no longer have to rely on the Commonwealth or the European Union or asylum seeking. Ministers go round the world attending places far and wide in both Africa and Asia asking people to come to this country. So in other words, even when they've run out of excuses to bring them in, they bring them in and say, come over nevertheless. 
Now, the problem with this, of course, is that the political class, the Conservative, Labour and Liberal Party, didn't allow this to happen. A lot of people think, well, it's a bit of a mistake. It wasn't very wise of them. You know, perhaps their eye went off the ball. They didn't allow this to take place. They planned it. As I've said, they didn't pass the British Nationality Act 1948 by mistake. They passed it. And when an incoming Conservative government came in in 1951, they allowed it to stay on the statute book. They didn't enter the European community by mistake. They passed it, and successive governments have allowed it. And the same with asylum seeker legislation, and so on and so forth. The political class are determined to smother this country in foreign immigration. So I would ask you, in the future, to leaflet for this party, to raise money as you have done already for this party, to stand on occasion for this party and support those who do so, to canvass for this party, to buy its literature, to watch its propaganda, primarily but not exclusively on the internet, to vote for this party when you have the opportunity to do so, at all local elections, at regional elections. If there's an English parliament, vote for a particular party when it comes to those elections. If there's a democratic senate that replaces the House of Lords in the next five to ten years, don't deny yourself the possibility of voting for this party at such an election. In the coming parliamentary elections at the Westminster tier, still residually the most important parliament in our land, vote for this particular political party that will probably run more constituency candidates than it ever has before. When the devolved elections come round again in Wales and in Scotland, make sure people up there vote in the correct way. And when the European elections come round again, try and make 12 MEPs and 20 thereafter rather than two. Try and have a massive block in the European Parliament because the more you win, the more power you get, the more energy you have, the more the cowards come out and say, I agreed with you all along. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that, uh, those, warm word, with those warm words. Listen, it's a privilege to be here and an inspiration because your branch here in Burnley, East Lancashire, you got our success rolling in the beginning of this millennium. In the year 2002, you got your first councillors elected and you've had councillors in Burnley Town Hall continuously ever since and you have done very, very well. It's a privilege to be here, and when I say it's an inspiration, I'm not exaggerating. We need victories. You've got to see that we can win. We have the theory, we've had the theory for a long time, but to go out amongst British people and persuade them to vote for initially unknown patriots who they didn't know from Adam, and then to vote them into office, and then for brave men and women to keep those positions in the teeth of all the disgusting lies and trash thrown at them by Lib Lab and Con, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Lib Lab and Con, Liberal, Labour, Con, as in con, con, as in Con man, yes, Conservative, as in Con man, as in confidence trickster, yeah. I arrived a bit early in your town, so I walked around and I went to the town hall, and it is very satisfactory to see the photographs of the BMP councillors, and it is an honour to be amongst your elected councillors, yes, it's an honour and a pleasure. Because we're in this business to win. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to win. And we're in business to win. And winning is very satisfactory. This party was formed by patriots who could see clearly that the old parties had failed us, had failed the British people. The older ones of us in this room, we have the experience to remember a properly run Britain. When I was young, several decades back, when I was young, everybody had a job in this country and everybody was expected to work. Um, the streets were safe and we didn't have religious fanatics trying to blow us up in the name of their religion. 